Once upon a time, or a couple weeks ago actually, I saw a post on social media of a song that someone was looking for. A guy named Ethan McIntyre had posted a three-second clip of a video that he taped off Canadian country music television in 1996, and he wanted to know who the band was. This is the clip. Yep, that's it. That's all he had to go on. The video featured a guy with a goatee, black hair, and a white shirt with suspenders playing an electric guitar and what looks like an old house. Ethan had been looking for the answer for the who this band was for over three years. But I didn't recognize the song, and I was about to go digging when I saw a follow-up comment from someone who asked Chris Murphy from the band Sloan if he recognized it. He did. He said it was the band Big Picture from Halifax, but he didn't say what the song was called. I didn't have anything else to go on, so to see if he was right, I looked up Big Picture online, found they had two albums, one in 1994, released independently through CBC, and the other in 1996, when the band were signed to a major label, Warner Music. And I didn't have either album by the band, but what I did have was a collection of radio samplers that Warner Music had sent out to record stores and radio stations in the 90s, CDs that contained all the singles that the label was pushing at the time. Back in the 90s when a band got signed to a major label, sometimes that label took tracks from their previous independent record and re-released them to radio while the band were recording a new album. And that's exactly what Warner Music did with Big Picture. Because in my collection, I found a radio sampler from September of 1995 with a song by Big Picture called Just Passin' By. And a quick check of the CD proved that it was the song people were looking for. I posted that I had a copy of the song online. People flipped out and eventually got in contact with the guitarist in the video. His name is Asif Ilyas, and we're going to talk to him about this whole lost song story in a few minutes. But first, the no longer mysterious song. Here's Big Picture with Just Passing By. Just the other day I was passing you by Thinking of the things that I I thought the song that I sang was new And I thought I won't be lonely anymore But oh no Just the other day I was passing you by Looking for 
That's Big Picture from 1994 with Just Passing By. And as I mentioned before, we have Asif Ilyas on the line. He was the guitarist and main songwriter in the band. And he joins me now from Barbados. Hi, Asif. How are you doing? Hello. How are you? So this must have been a huge shock to you when you were told people were looking for your song after, what, 30 years? It really, it really was. I got an email from from you, correct? And uh, mm-hmm. it was strange because it's like, why, why this song? It was so long ago, and um, it's sort of lost in the the archives. And uh, I was like, how did how did how do they know about this one? This is so <laughs> long ago before before the advent of digital, where we kind of saved and we have a record of everything. Then when, then when I um, went to find the the VHS tape that I had that I knew of. Um, the much uh, much east it was called my, the Mike Campbell show. It was right. one of the only times that it you know it didn't really get much video play at all. And then I posted it, and I did had no idea. And I was like, "What people are have been searching for the song?" And it kind of like it was probably around midnight. And I woke up the next morning, and I really didn't think it was a dream. And all credit to Chris Murphy from Sloan, who instantly recognized you in the video. Like even though it, yes, had, it had been right. like thirty years, what's the story of you, you two knowing each other? We actually, Big Picture, played at NASCAD at Sloan's first gig. Um, oh, wow. On in, the same bill in, together. On the same bill. And we were wildly different musically. You know, um, <laughs> they were coming out of the grunge sort of Seattle sound, uh, that American alt, alt rock pop sound. And we were coming from the world music thing. And it was, you know, it was back then, there was bands, you know, from all sorts of genres that would play, but we were an outlier for sure. I knew of them kind of. Benny had dated Henry Sangalang's sister in high school, and he was one of the members of Carney Lake Road, which evolved into Sloan. So he knew of Chris Murphy and whatnot. And then as we grew through the, the Halifax music scene, um, Sloan took off. They got their big deal and everything. And we'd run into them now and then. And I worked with Patrick Pentland, actually, at a place called Blower Street paper chase so i knew patrick uh, he's a really nice guy and he worked there and we just sold magazines in a sort of a convenience store and um we exchanged stories but i didn't know chris that well but he was quite hooked up into the halifax scene and kind of knew all that was going on he was sort of a, a kingpin around here around in halifax so i i'm not surprised that he would have recognized me so how did the band big picture get started in the early 90s Big picture was um, a friend of mine, uh, Angus Gibbon. He was a drummer in grade 10. I was in grade 12. Um, I had been playing in a band that mostly played police songs. We were called the Castaways. And uh, in grade 9, 8, 10. So it was a high school band. And we performed talent shows and whatnot in high school. And Benny, um, he wasn't a, a singer as such, but he sang. And he loved seeing the band. And he kind of asked, do you need a singer? That's Benny Fong. Benny who, Fong. Right. Benny okay. Fong, yeah. And we had um, entered a thing called the Battle of the Bands. Uh, it was a citywide talent show. We actually won the whole thing. That kind of put the stars in our eyes. And then after high school, I took a year off and, and studied to try and get into Dal because my dad said, if you want to do music, you have to go to university for it. So I took a year off and really studied hard because I hadn't done music theory at all. And so I got into Dal the following year and we sort of kept going from there. And Big Picture um, had hounded the doors on CBC Studio H, uh, mm-hmm. Glenn Meisner and Carl Falkenham. And we got onto a compilation album, mm-hmm. Here and Now it was called, put out by the Coast magazine. There were there were a lot of groups from the scene around the time. And Glenn Meisner and Carl Falkenham of CBC Halifax had heard it and th- agreed to put us on a show called Up on the Roof. And then we recorded um, Just Passing By in Studio H in Halifax. You toured that a lot. And then I guess you eventually got signed with Warner Music after the album came well, out? Well, yeah, we didn't. We got signed with a local subsidiary of Warner Music. It was a small label that was distributed by Warner. The first album, though, was our own like record label. We, we named it Mongrel Records, and uh, we had distribution just locally. Then when we got the this deal with the small label, we ended up doing a video and Mm -hmm. there was a a crew and everything put together to do this video that was the video of note and we filmed it um north of toronto in orillia ontario in this in this bizarre antique filled barn and um that's the video that 
accidentally got recorded for three seconds. Right. That started this whole kind of resurgence into the... Started into the, the whole thing. It. I think that I'm pretty sure that that three seconds that was recorded was the only time it was ever on the New Country Network. So oh. that makes it even more um, bizarre that, you know, that was recorded then. And somebody else pointed out that it was discovered on the very same day that it had originally been recorded on that videotape in 1996, <laughs> like 28 years later or something. Um, I know, it's insane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was looking up, like when Chris Murphy mentioned that Big Picture was the band that everybody should be looking for, I went and looked on the Discogs page for the band, and there were the two albums there, the Independent recorded by CBC, and then yes. the one recorded by Warner, uh, released by Warners in 1996. And there was a video for Under the Birdbath, on YouTube, yeah, uh, that that's somebody right. had just—I don't know how they found it, but they just put it up. And I was listening to it, and I, I'm going to just want to play a little bit of it here. So this is this is big picture sure. from the band's second album, and Under the Bird Bath. So that's a very different sound there from the first album, almost like yeah. power pop Beatle influenced. And I was listening to that yeah. going, like, this doesn't sound like the same band at all who had done no. the the Just Passing By, although you did have a violin player in the video. So that was kind of like, oh, well, mm -hmm. maybe this is the same band. Like, yeah. That was the direction you, you were going in instead of just changing up your sound? Well, I mean, I think there was a, sort of a gravitational force of, of, you know, like when you're young and in a band, which, you know, and I look back and I go, no, that's not, I would not have done that again. You know, you, you kind of go, try to go with the tides. But I grew up in England from the age of two till about 10, just shy of 10. So I, there was a lot of music I listened to was British, like sort of Brit pop and everything. And even in the 90s, it was a huge Brit pop wave that was happening. But it was coming out of the Nirvana grunge wave. Like, you know, there was bands like Blur mm -hmm. and Radiohead and stuff like that, um, The Verve, they were all coming from England. And I kind of took to that, like on a songwriting focus. And it was born out of the gravitational forces of feeling the grunge scene in Halifax and going, you know, this is not because we were always hitting brick walls um, with Big Picture. At, when you're young, you try and do go with the trends. But I just didn't relate to any of the sort of American grunge pop stuff mm -hmm. um sonic youth and all of that stuff i just didn't know any of that i didn't know like i was nowhere no way going to try and write anything that harkened back to that so i kind of fell as a songwriter towards the british side and so that beatles slash blur you know dodgy all those bands that were coming mm -hmm. from england that were born out of the the grunge scene um that's where we were leaning towards and hence mere kind of kept going in that direction yeah i was going to bring that and, that was the band you started after uh, big picture yeah and and we were always so we were never even though we were from halifax i think it was sort of cursed to ever sound like we were from halifax so that's what, what ended up landing mirror the deal in europe because we just sounded more european at the time and now everything's kind of blown wide open you know you can be from anywhere and sound like anything right so there's there <laughs> yeah. are scenes but the internet has just made everything so cross-pollinated and it's it's quite wonderful but back then you know you you tried to do your best to try and get in the lane right but yeah it just it was weird yeah so what are some of the um, upcoming projects you're working on now so um the last two years i kind of learned um a style of acoustic guitar called percussive guitar and i've really been sort of trying to get my fingers um you know into getting that style this finger style 
solo classic classical sort of finger style guitar on acoustic but also playing the drums at the same time mm -hmm. and the bass and i have, was having fun kind of reinventing arrangements of songs that i thought never got a chance i am going to release an album called echoes um in a few months and i'm putting out sort of a video of instrumentals and some with vocals as well of songs that i thought you know never got heard so it's kind of a real strange thing going on with this just passing by world was so easy thing because it's kind of what i decided to do myself was to go back and pick songs from the past like there were echoes and rebring them so that's going to be the next project for me and it'll be solo acoustic guitar but you'll it'll sound like there's drums and whatever but it's all on one guitar and um that that's what my next project is. And I want to go out with a song from one of your uh, solo albums, because you've had a number of them over the last, uh, I guess, 20 years or so. Um, what song would you like to play, one of yours? Um, oh, wow, that's a hard one. I, I think um, a song called Stay With Me from Arrows would be good. That's the latest uh, album from 2020. I put it out March 2020, uh, May 2020 during the pandemic which was a, a little bit of a mistake, but I figured I didn't know it would last so long. No. Nobody <laughs> no did. No one did, right? No. no. <laughs> what, what's the story behind this song? It's sort of a, a song about living in the moment and, um, and realizing that you never know what's coming around the corner. Um, so you just sort of surround yourself with the people you love and um, hold strong and uh, look forward to the future, knowing that you don't know what's going to happen, but being happy in the present. Right. Well, we'll play that right now. Thanks, Asif, for taking the, the time to talk with me today. Oh, it's my pleasure, absolutely. And thank you so much for reaching out to me and uh, starting this, this wave. <laughs> Stay with me 